Hello, I'm Harry Riley. Welcome to Harry's 10 Minute Tales. This is called True Colours. This story is fiction and resemblance to anyone, living or dead, is coincidental. Bartholomew Chambers was a wealthy man. He'd prospered in his chosen career as property developer and land agent and was settling quite nicely into early retirement. His wife had died young after bearing him two sons, the twins, Adam and Joseph. Like many twins, their voices were virtually identical, but unlike identical twins, their features and characters were totally different. Adam was his father's favourite, having a temperament much like his own. He was rakish, had an easy-going nature and could charm the birds off the trees, as his father often remarked. He grew up with a liking for drinking and gambling and womanising, and was regularly seen frequenting the town's flashpots. Joseph, on the other hand, grew up to be much more sober, having more of his mother's temperament. This rattled his father, who would criticise and complain and find fault at every opportunity. Why can't you be more like your brother? He's a real go-getter. He takes life by the scruff of the neck and shakes it into submission. But not you, you're a spineless idiot. I despair of you. You'll never make anything of yourself. Go on, get out of my sight. I'm sick to the death of you. This being one of his typical outbursts. Joseph would just nod and wander off dejectedly, accepting his father's bile as his lot. Both sons were in their early twenties when Bartholomew had his accident. He stumbled out while walking and hit his head on a rock. After being knocked unconscious, he had a short stay in hospital. A fit man, he recovered quickly enough, but from the moment he regained consciousness, he found he couldn't see. He was totally blind. The doctors couldn't account for his sudden blindness, and said that one day his sight might return, just as quickly as it had gone. The boys were given the doctor's prognosis, and once they were alone, Adam made his views known to Joseph, in no uncertain terms. Well, that's it, kiddo, I'm off. I'm not sticking around to nurse, nursemaid, a blind old man, on the off chance he might one day recover his vision. I've got other fish to fry. And with that he set about collecting his clothes and favourite possessions into two large suitcases. He opened his father's wall safe, and helped himself to all the cash and valuables he could find, and bid his brother farewell, saying he would probably emigrate to get away from this miserable dump. Once his twin had departed, Joseph sat down at the bureau and wrote a letter to his aunt Jenny, Bartholomew's sister, who now lived in Canada. Having moved there with her husband, Jenny had been very fond of Bartholomew, but they'd fallen out over her choice of husband, and her brother had cut himself off from her. Since that time, her only family contact had been with Joseph by letter. He now wrote to tell her about his father's disability and mentioned as a footnote that Adam had left home to seek his fortune. The ambulance brought Bartholomew home and he was still as noisy as ever as he crashed about the house, knocking over the furniture and cursing loudly. Joseph took his arm and guided him to his favourite armchair, chuckling at his father's discomfort. But don't laugh, Adam. It might happen to you one day. With a shock, Joseph realised his father had mistaken him for his brother. They both had similar inflections in their voices and he also knew he could easily mimic his brother's own little quirks and mannerisms, enough to fool his blind father. And so with Adam having gone, swearing never to return, why shouldn't he assume his mantle? Joseph had always wanted to please his father and to share his affection and now was his opportunity to help him in his hour of need. The years passed and Bartholomew grew content in the knowledge that his favourite son Adam had grown into a caring helper, just as he always knew he would. He never ceased to remind his remaining son that he was glad that worthless idiot Joseph had cleared off the moment a man's help was needed. In the meantime, the real Adam had gone from bad to worse, and desperate for cash, had carried out a series of robberies. Eventually, had escaped capture by fleeing to the continent, and from there had taken passage for Canada. And it was there that, that his aunt Jenny discovered he was serving a long sentence in prison for murder. She was able to communicate this to Joseph, who had religiously kept in touch with her. Ten years later, a strange event occurred in the Chambers' household. Bartholomew, having despaired of ever, ever regaining his lost sight, fell downstairs and received a hefty blow on the head. Otherwise feeling OK, he staggered up rubbing his eyes. They felt strange, and then he thought he detected a faint light. Over the next few weeks, this light in both eyes grew stronger, and at last... He found out he could make the shapes of furniture. He could see, 
and the first person he recognised was Joseph as he returned out from a shopping trip. What the hell have you come for, he snarled. You can damn well clear off. I don't need you. I suppose you think you can turn up after all these years and I'll forgive and forget. Be off, you useless fool. I've disowned you. Joseph realised his father's vision had returned and being too proud to admit it, it was he who had stayed behind all those years, pretending to be Adam. He sadly left home without bothering to pack. Out in the street, with only the clothes he stood up in and with very little money, he soon became destitute and was picked up, eventually, by a local charity after sleeping rough in wintry conditions. By another peculiar coincidence, two months before Bartholomew's blindness had been reversed, Adam was released early from prison for good behaviour and unceremoniously kicked out of Canada. He decided to return home and throw himself on his father's mercy, if he was still alive. It so happened that he wandered back on the same day and only hours after Joseph had been evicted and being quick to seize up the new situation, he listened amazed while his father told him how he'd just sent his worthless brother packing. Adam couldn't believe his luck. The two brothers' reversal of fortunes would have been complete had it not been for Jenny. Not having heard from Joseph for a month or two and being alarmed at the lack of constant news, she vowed to return to England and sort things out. She turned up at her brother's house several months later and confronted the two relatives. Bartholomew welcomed her with arms open wide and praised the Lord for miraculously restoring his eyesight. He told her how it was Adam who'd been the caring son all those dark years and had kept him from going insane with his cheerful and unsisting assistance. How he'd selflessly given up the chance of finding a wife and a family of his own and how he'd shown his father the priceless affection of a wonderful son. Jenny was astonished as she knew the real truth. A knock came on the door and a policeman told Bartholomew his other son Joseph had died of a fever and passed away in a hostel for the homeless. End. <laughs>